Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is eight self-improvement lessons which result from my being a family systems therapist for 31 years and a compulsive student of human behavior all my life, 70-some years. The third lesson out of eight has to do with a subject that many people don't know a lot about and don't want to know a lot about. It is healthy grief. In my observation as a therapist, what I found is that many people uh, are blocked in healing grief after they've experienced major losses in their lives. Blocked grief causes significant psychological, physiological problems. So lesson three exists to give you some vital information about this natural process that we all need. The purpose of this video is to outline for you uh, seven requisites that anybody, adult or child, needs in order to grieve well, for healthy grief to progress. You may think grieving is like digestion. Once it's started, it goes until it stops. That's not true. Grieving can be blocked or slowed if the conditions aren't right. There are seven things that we losers, because we all lose from time to time, we have bonds with favorite things that break, either by choice or by chance. There are seven things we need in order to grieve to completion in a healthy way. The first one will make no sense to you unless you have reviewed the videos for Lesson 1 or actually seen Lesson 1 in the Break the Cycle website. That lesson has to do with who's really running your life. Is it your true self who makes good decisions or a false self who can be fear-based or shame-based or guilt-based and get in your way? So the first thing you need for healthy grieving is to have your true self leading and guiding your personality. The second thing you need is awareness. It may sound like a no-brainer. Many people, especially in contemporary America, where we are bombarded with stimulation all the time, sounds, motions, colors, hurry, hurry, buy, do this, go there, often awareness, calm, understanding and perception of what's going on inside of me and around me is very difficult to come by or sustain. So you need to be aware. Aware of what? You need to be aware that you've had a loss. You need to be aware of what the loss means to you and to people you care about. And lastly, you need to be aware of your own grieving process. Is it on track? Or is it stuck? So you need awareness. In order to judge whether you're stuck or not, the third requisite is <clears throat> you need knowledge of healthy grief. You have the knowledge if you can name the three levels on which we all grieve and the phases in each level. If you can't yet name those, see lesson three. You need to know these things in order to judge whether you are done grieving or not. The fourth thing you need for healthy grieving is something that can be called inner permission that may not make any intrinsic sense right away. Let me suggest that many kids who are raised by psychologically wounded, highly distracted parents who don't have the vital knowledge that you'll find in my nonprofit website. Many such parents don't have much tolerance for kids when they are grieving. If a child is sad or depressed or hurt or angry or listless or moping or numb, adults often get frustrated and may tell the child, directly or indirectly, put on a happy face, cheer up. What are you moping for? Stop whining. Stop making up these stories. Doesn't get on with it. Get, go ahead. Come on. Get back into life. 
Stop being a droop. If kids don't get corrective action from other adults, they will take these messages with them into adulthood. And when they need to grieve as adults, these old childhood messages will pop right up in their heads. I have to have a happy face. I better go to my room until I come out with a better attitude. I can't get angry. I shouldn't keep telling my story over and over. People are going to get tired of it. I shouldn't make other people unhappy. Should, should, must, must, can, cannot. All these old rules can get in the way of healthy grieving. A better situation is internal permission where you have generated your own set of rules through knowledge which say, I have a loss, I need to grieve it. That involves some strong emotions, confusion, shock, sadness, anger, perhaps apathy. I need to feel these things and sort out the questions that come with these things over and over and over until I accept my loss and what it means and how it's affected other people, then I can resume normal life. That is internal permission to grieve. Thoughts like that. So that's a requisite. You also need external permissions to grieve. If you're no longer in childhood, you may still be surrounded by people who are uncomfortable with strong emotions or sadness or despair or anger or confusion or repetition. And so if you need to do normal things that grievers do, the people around you may feel uncomfortable or upset and try and get you to stop. That is lacking external permission to grieve. You need to be around people who understand the grief process, who empathize within limits with what you're going through, what you've lost, and what it means, and who can patiently encourage you to feel your feelings, to ask the questions that need to get sorted out, to tell your story over and over. I'm so sad my pet is gone. I'm so sad I lost my job. I'm so, I'm so sad I'm no longer young. You need to be surrounded by empathic, supportive people. The next requisite you need is patience. Many people feel like grieving ought to be done in a weekend. Depending on many factors, on the strength of the bond, on the nature of what you've lost, on the inner and outer permissions, grieving can take months or even years. So you need patience and you need faith in the process. If I stay with it, it will end. You need confidence and patience. The last thing you need is time. You need undistracted periods of time where you can process your loss, feel your feelings, think your thoughts, sort out your questions, say out loud perhaps what you need, make sounds, get angry. You need time to do those over and over again until you reach the final stage of the grieving process, which is acceptance. You accept your loss, you accept it will not come back, whatever it is, and you move on. So, my point here is this. Grieving can be blocked if you do not have these seven requisites. You're self in charge, awareness of several things, knowledge of the three levels and multiple phases of grieving, inner permissions, outer permissions, supports, patience, faith, and time. I hope you'll remember this the next time you experience a major loss and or the next time you encounter a person you care about who themselves has had a major loss. Whether that's an adult or a child, we all need the same thing. So, keep these seven requisites in mind. Study the other videos associated with Lesson 3 and 
study Lessons 1 through 3 in the Break the Cycle website. There are no ads, there are no commercials, it doesn't sell anything except knowledge. I wish you a happier, more successful life. Thanks for watching.